thank all of you. We'll start a five-minute round of questions. Um, a couple of things you said are very disturbing, Mr. Dumby. I would intuitively thought that we would see a significant increase in home health care over that period of time, and that would be a success, keeping people in their home environment less costly than institutional care. But that's not the case. And Mrs. Stein, you got our attention by saying enforce the law. You know, something about Congress. When we pass laws, we like to see them enforced. Uh, and the fact that particularly in, in Medicare Advantage, they look at this as an acute care need rather than a long-term need, I think is pretty obvious when you look at the numbers that are out there and the utilization in, managed, in Medicare Advantage programs. So how do we overcome that? Because as I said in my introductory comments, we don't have a really coordinated long-term care strategy in this nation. It goes well beyond health care needs. We know that. Uh, how do we make the uh, Medicare, Medicaid reimbursement programs and benefits more functional to the long-term needs of individuals who really want to stay in their community as long as they possibly can, but they need to be able to get the services they need? So uh, enforce the law sounds great. But can you expand on that a little bit? And I'll start with Mrs. Stein. I'll give maybe Mr. Dumby a chance. Your mic, please. I guess I turned it off instead yeah. of on. Thank you. I'm happy to do so. The main thing about enforcing the law I meant to um, really emphasize is to ensure that Congress knows and insists that CMS knows and implements this benefit in a way that doesn't constantly imply and enforce a myth that this is a short-term acute care benefit. There are policies and practices that incentivize the program to be short-term and acute care. And CMS says it all the time. We have corrected myriad handbooks and pamphlets that come from CMS to, to indicate that this is a short-term benefit when it's not. That myth really needs to be dispelled. Then, it, the, the payment model, the quality measures, and the auditing and oversight of the benefit all need to be geared to re ensure that people who qualify under the law, they're homebound, they have a physician or authorized practitioner's or, or order, and they need a skilled service, that they can get all the services that they need for as long as they need them. Currently, the PDGM model, payment model, actually creates disincentives for, it to, for this to be the case. It pays more for the first 30 days of service. It pays more for people who come from a hospital or an institution. It pays less for people uh, over the long term, and if they come from their home, they didn't need an, uh, a hospital to stay. Audits are done for, uh, for outliers, they call them, for agencies that provide services for more than 30 days. There should be oversight of underutilization, under provision of services. There should not be a disincentive to provide services for people who need them to maintain or slow decline of their condition. Let me give Mr. Dumbe a chance. Uh, what do we do about Medicare Advantage? <coughs> is it there? There's, uh, red always tells me to stop. <laughs> yeah, Red is on. Uh, I, I think Medicare Advantage offers a great promise for care in the home, but it's a fully unfulfilled one at this point. Medicare Advantage should be one of the strongest partners with home health because as Medicare fee-for-service has demonstrated, home health services brings dynamic value to the Medicare program, a value-based purchasing program. One of the only ones that was successful at CMMI is in home health, returning billions of dollars to Medicare by keeping people out of hospitals and readmissions to hospitals through home health services. I think the plans need to wake up. <laughs> You know, read, read the data and understand the value that's there. Uh, and, and then maybe they could respect home health services, not only in terms of utilization, 
Uh, but in terms of payment rates, uh, right now, Medicare Advantage plans pay about 80 to 85 percent of the cost of care. Mr. Grombowski, let me give you a chance on one of the studies that I have looked at on the effectiveness of home health care, studied by the National Institute of Aging, which found that racial minorities show less functional improvement as a result of home health care than white patients, giving us the clear indication that, once again, the underserved community is underserved. Your comments about that? Healthcare is local and very similar to nursing homes. We have 11,000 home health agencies, so they very much reflect the communities in which they operate. And so those, that huge uh, variation we see across areas shows up in the home health care data. And we, we need to do better there by not just improving the home health care and giving uh, more support there to, the, to these individuals, but also this is about uh, Medicaid. This is about their long-term care, so, uh, and obviously broader community resources as well. Thanks. Thank you. Senator Daines. Chairman Cardin, thank you. I want to get 